George Papadopoulos, uh, the former Trump campaign staffer and real cool dude <laughs> who... <laughs> who has now admitted to lying to the FBI. He could be a real problem here, because we now know not only did Papadopoulos have contact with the Russians during the campaign, who apparently told him through an intermediary that they had dirt on Hillary Clinton, but he mentioned his Russian contacts to the campaign, who responded like this. A Trump campaign supervisor told Papadopoulos, quote, I would encourage you to pursue contact with Russians, and that he had done great work. You know, it speaks to the sheer stupidity of the people involved here that so many of them often left written records of their potentially criminal actions. <laughs> it's like if, during Watergate, we had an email chain of Howard Hunt saying, about to break in, and, <laughs> and Nixon replying, noise. <laughs> but, but you know what? This... This would not be stupid Watergate without some truly idiotic details. Because one of Papadopoulos' former professors described him as zealous and a bit simple, which, <laughs> incidentally, is also how you would describe a golden retriever in ISIS. <laughs> and, and some of his Russian sources turned out to be pretty unimpressive. Papadopoulos was in London, meeting with his Russian connections, including a woman he thought was Vladimir Putin's niece, but turns out was not. That's right. We are now living in an era where the top New York Times headline could conceivably have been Shades McCool got catfished by a fake Putin niece. <laughs> Trump is now also desperately trying to distance himself from Papadopoulos, calling him a low-level volunteer, which is a pretty weak defence, because not only did Trump once call him an excellent guy, they were photographed together in a national security meeting during the campaign. That photograph, uh, interestingly, was released earlier this week when the seal on grand jury testimony was... I'm just kidding. Trump posted it to his Instagram last <laughs> March. Of course he did. And while that photo looks pretty damning, the White House this week insisted that it meant nothing. Sir, uh, how can you uh, describe uh, Mr. Papadopoulos as having a limited role when there's a, there's a photograph of Mr. Papadopoulos sitting at a table with... Uh, the uh, president candidate has Trump thousands of photographs with meeting. millions of people, yeah. so... Now, she, she is not actually wrong there. Trump has taken photos with many, many people. Uh, here's one of him with O.J. Simpson. Uh, here's one of Trump and Harvey Weinstein. Here he is with Grimace. So, think about that. The president has smiled for photos with murderers, sexual predators, and, in the case of Grimace, both. But, <laughs> but the point is, none of them got to sit at the table with Trump and his campaign staff. And when Trump was asked on Friday about what had happened in that meeting, this was his response. I don't remember much about that meeting. It was a very unimportant meeting. Took place a long time. Don't remember much about it. Oh! You don't remember. That, that is convenient, although it's slightly undercut by one of Trump's favorite boasts. People know me from my memory. It's called, like, up here, and it's called memory, and it's called other things. I'm fortunate that I have a good memory. I have a good memory. I have, like, a good memory. I have a very good memory. I have a good memory, like a great memory. I have a great memory. One of the great memories of all time. Yeah, and there is, there is just no way to reconcile those two positions, although... Trump has actually tried in the past, because when he was asked during a deposition in 2015 about claiming that he had one of the world's great memories, he said, and I quote, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> as good as my memory is, I don't remember that. But I have a good memory. <laughs> so, so right now, 